So our next speaker has traveled a whopping 33 miles from the General Motors Technical Center in Warren. Uh, Mr. Carlo Forrest started his career over 35 years ago as a, as a co-op at Kettering getting a degree in electrical engineering. And uh, since that time, he's had a number of different roles at GM, uh, including manufacturing operations where he's supported production, maintenance, and quality. Manufacturing engineering, where he supported operations and launches. And right now he is working in uh, body manufacturing engineering, supporting global PFMEA and quality initiatives. Uh, he's spent uh, an astounding one year in Oros, and he's here to tell you about some of his experiences. So will you please help me in welcoming Mr. Carlo Forrest. Thank you. So we've got a polling question to start with. Uh, don't know if it's ready to fire, Brittany. Not. So should show up anytime soon. Basically, I'm trying to understand your level of RASIC knowledge. And so those who don't know what RASIC is, don't worry. That's going to be part of the discussion this morning. So let Give you a minute to answer here. Okay. So very few. Okay. Okay, so that's good. And so about half of you really know what RASIC is, and a good chunk of you have no clue. So that's good. That's good. We're going to be navigating. So for those who are really good in RASIC, um, please be gracious for the other folks, because the intent here is RASIC is something that's used a lot into uh, the industry, uh, especially those pockets of the industry where people hate meetings, hate to plan, they don't want to plan, they do because they have to. So they typically sit down once, establish a plan, and then pretty much never meet after that unless they really have to. So that's when the RASIC tool is used, and I'll be walking into that to help you out. So. What's a RASIC? It's a management planning tool uh, designed to identify roles in a project or process. And we'll be going in details in there because it's important to know how the tool works in order to see how we can move this into OROS. Okay, so it's a simple application in OROS. Once it's figured out, it becomes very trivial, but to get there it took us a while. So RASIC is actually, there's a, each letter in that word means a role. So what you're doing is you're doing role attribution. So the R is the responsible. It's the, you own it. <laughs> when things go wrong, you've got the big R. You own it, right? So that's something people like to do in the industry <laughs> sometimes, unfortunately. But it happens, and it's there. So the responsible person, the owner of that specific task. The A is the approver or the person to whom we present. Uh, S is the support. So support is like if the big R has a meeting every week, the S is there to support at every meeting. Okay? The I is the I need to know about this, but I don't necessarily need to participate, like CC. And the C is for consult. So what's the difference between an S and a C? The S is always there. The C is as required only. Technically, the C is not part of the team, but when you need that person, that person's pulled into the equation. You, you put one task per row, and you try to have at least one R per row. So each row, each task is owned by at least one person. You try not to have two, because it messes up things, but at least you have one. 
And obviously, you want to do this with everybody present in the room at least once so everybody buys into it. And it's good for planning. It's not a very good tracking tool, but it's a good, OK, let's get together. The big director told us to get this done. You know, we got to go fast, meet for an hour, get it planned. And then everybody knows what they have to do anyway, so they go out and do it. So that's the pretty little picture of an extremely simplified problem solving process. If you want in, uh, people typically use Excel. They put the tasks on the left column, and then each column after that to the right becomes the different department, different roles, different person in the team, call it what you want. And then uh, the buckets, sometimes called. And then each task has its R, and then if there's other roles, then you assign the letter to it. Excel having a nice conditional formatting, people like to use a color coding based on the a letter. So, you know, it just looks prettier, easier visual tool, okay? You don't have to use the color. That's just an add-on to help understand. Okay, so how do you go about going from that to plugging this into Oros, using Oros Okay, to say, okay, well, I've got data in there, but how can I have that responsibility assignment, that visual? So it's not just a, a one-shot deal. We can actually use this later to manage. So you obviously have to create your COP, you have to create your KPAX, and then you can easily display the KPAX using the RASIC format. That's gonna be the three main points of this presentation. The first one is creating your COP, so like in my case, I have to go to the admin and say, please, I need a new COP. Um, when you go through the COP, one of the very important tasks is to decide the seven letters that are gonna call this for. <laughs> so, little trick, put RASIC in there. That's gonna makes it really easy when you do a little search and you have all these hundreds of COPs, which one do I need? You just type in RASIC and it should pop up. And also in your KPAC type, because you might as well create a KPAC type for RASIC, also try to plug the name RASIC in there, just again to help you make it easy. Once you've got this, what was in the left column, right? Um, your, your header, that becomes your header. So you're gonna have the uh, tasks, that's gonna be your title. And then the description instructions are the details for each one of these tasks. And, and I'll show that in more detail. This is more like a conceptual. It's, don't try to read this eye chart, but the idea is the con concept here. And then the attributes will be more of each of the buckets. Okay, so the columns become the attributes. And we will see that. So um, here's a little bonus here. I've kind of developed a little process in Excel to help me uh, create um, KPAX, well, start from the COP, go to the KPAX, what's a, an easy way to create KPAX? So I've developed this little Excel tool. Um, I don't have any patent and rights to it, but please use it, it's super simple. Once you'll see it, it's like, duh, okay. I can do that. So what we put in column A, and I'll show all this, right? So we have a column for the attributes, you have a column for the type of attributes, and then a list of choices, and then one column per task. Again, I'll show this in details, just a, an overview chart. So the first one we said is the attributes, your column A. So you've got each of these, um, we said the, the basic, the, who owns it becomes, so what was on top, the columns now become the attributes. And then the type, so this is where you decide, okay, in my KPAC, am I gonna take for each one of these, is this a number, is this a yes, no, is this a drop down? is this a drop down where I choose only one, is it a drop down where I choose many? It's a database design, so you have to decide what's in your field, right? So here I've, in all of these cases, I'm gonna have a choice because I'm gonna decide if this rule, if this role, sorry, for that task, is this person an R, an A, an S, I, or a C? So I have to pick one of many. So I could, you know, a different situation might be I need to pick many from many or just 
uh, a one, a yes, yes, no, whatever it is. So in your Excel file, the second column just becomes your type. The third column is, okay, if I have a series of choices, what should be that series of choices? In this case, it's pretty easy. It's all the same, all right? It's, it's one of the letters. But you could have a question where the first one is, uh, what country are we going to sell this to? So you would list all the countries. The second row would be, uh, is this for the, the north plant or the south plant or the Mexico plant or this is where, which plant? So you would have your list of plants in the second row. So that would be your list of choices, for example, okay? So this is how you, you build your Excel spreadsheet, slowly starting to grow. And now, the, if you keep going that spreadsheet towards the right, you're gonna start creating the KPAX and you'll see how that fits together. Basically, column D going forward uh, to the right, you're gonna list your KPAX. I just arbitrarily started number one and going further. What is the task and what are the instructions? That's basically in your KPAX header, you have some fields, and instead of typing it directly into OROS, you just plug that into your Excel, okay? And top view, a little bit of what that looks like you have um, on the top there you can see all the k-packs and then for each k-pack I've determined that okay when I do task number one this is k-pack number one which in this case was initial problem solving okay the k-pack unfortunately I put an arrow over there but the first one's got an R which is the the row and since this is Excel you can use the freeze frame command in Excel, and you plug that first letter there, and this way you can scroll. If you have 50 k packs, you know, because they don't fit in one screen, you can scroll back and forth or up and down, and then you don't lose your information. You know where it is. Okay, so it's easier said than heard <laughs> from me, but you'll have this available for you, and you can plug that into Excel, and anyway, that allows me to be super fast and efficient when I have to create uh, a new, uh, a new uh, COP with KPAX and stuff. I can use this tool and go very, very quick. Okay, uh, and unfortunately it cuts off a little bit, but really that's the Excel spreadsheet. I kind of took a, a picture of it. Sorry, it uh, <laughs> some bleeds off a little bit, but really you have this little Excel matrix which shows your whole process now. Obviously, this is a super simplified thing and nothing's gonna look like that in real life. But you can imagine that you plug your own data, you can have you know, 200 KPACs if you want and you can have 20 attributes if you want. And then you just play around with Excel. Why Excel? Pretty much common knowledge, pretty much all over the world in every industry. So it's not too hard to teach people how to use this pattern in Excel. So if you wanna train people on how to build their own KPACs, this makes it easy, okay? So you got that for free. Okay, the next one is, okay, now that I have this nice Excel spreadsheet that basically has all the information that I need, okay, for my process, I wanna convert this into OROS, kind of translation type of thing. So you start with, okay, now I'm gonna work on KPAC number one. So you pull up your KPAC number one and then you go from that Excel, um, I can do this. Uh, so you go from that first cell here, which is in KPAC 1, initial problem solving, that becomes my first line under title in the KPAC header. The second one, instruction, that becomes by instruction here, the second line in the header for KPAC 1, okay? And then the attributes, I'm talking about the first line here, production, it's uh, R for KPAC 1, I only have one letter assigned, it's R, so that R goes here on to match production. So this is your correlation from your Excel spreadsheet to your KPAC. And then you would do the same thing for KPAC number five, for example, this would be equipment issue, I have an R and an S. So the equipment issue would be the title, this blob here would be the instruction, and then I would have an R for production and an S for maintenance. So production would have an R, and then maintenance is the second one would have an S. Okay, pretty straightforward. 
Once you've done this for all of your, basically you've converted all that Excel spreadsheet into all rows, okay? So now you've got all your k packs populated. What was in Excel is now in Oros. You go to the k uh screen, I guess we can call it. So this here is where you, uh, when you open it up, it has the list here of the k assessment issues. If you click on the k library button, I guess we can call it, and you select the very first one here, the list of all k okay? You're gonna get something like this, and then you want to create a, um, a view so that you see this information instead of the standard default format that comes up. You wanna convert this so that it looks like that color chart that I showed you earlier, okay, for the RASIC. So you select your views, you select change, okay, and then in the KPAC column chooser, so that's basically, okay, these are all the possibilities that you have, all the fields that you have, which column do you wanna show? Right, that's how it works. And this is like a click from the left column to the right column, you guys have done this before, you choose what you need. So the choices are here, you say, okay, task instruction, I need to have that, so you're gonna put it over here and you click continue. And then um, you would say, again, uh, change customs, column chooser, window open, in the left pane, scroll down, click and drag to the right pane. So you, you would select everything you need, and you click continue. And then what you have at the end of the day is your ROS, instead of looking like that default view that you've seen before when you say list all k packs. now because I have done this column choosing, because I have done the mapping preemptively, okay, intently, now if I look at it, I have, see, if you remember in the beginning, you had production, maintenance, quality, supplier quality, product, product engineering, and management, and then you had all the different tasks, the titles, and the task instructions, and now I had the R and the S, C, R, et cetera. So for this task, I only have one role, and it's a responsibility assigned to production. For this task, I have a lot of roles, and then production is a support, maintenance is consulting, Quality engineering owns it, supplier quality and product engineering are there to assist if required. So that's your RASIC format that we saw earlier in Excel, but now it's inside Oros. So you can use Oros to do all the other stuff that you like to do, but on top of it, if people like to have that view of who owns what, you have it there available, okay? And then um, display using RASIC format. So you say, okay, well, I wanna see that now. So you can basically save that view where you've built these columns. You save it, that's another function. So you say select view, save, to current, uh, save current to new view because now you've built it, you wanna make it uh, saved. And then you say you call it RASIC. And then when you pull that view, you click that view button, one of the view available is called RASIC. So then you can use it. Any questions? I understand it's very, very technical of steps, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to use it when you have it in front of you. Uh, please. Yeah. Hi there. Yeah, have, have you used the um, mass import export using Excel mm -hmm. to do that? Well, you could. Uh, in this particular case, I did not. But you could build it to do that, yeah. It, this bulk, uh, bulk create, yeah, you yeah. could build it that way, yeah. Okay. I, to me, it was so simple that I just copy and paste it. <laughs> it yeah, I, I was thinking good. for like 200 k. Yeah, if you have a lot, like... yeah, definitely you want to do bulk import, absolutely. Okay, yes. thank yeah. you. But chances are, if you have 200 steps or so, I'm not so sure you're gonna use a RASIC. <laughs> the RASIC is more like, you know, get it done quick. It's just people, I mean, I come from manufacturing, as you heard, and people hate to meet, they hate to plan, they just wanna, you know, let's meet for a few minutes because we hate meetings, we wanna be on the floor solving issues, right? 
So you do this, people are in and out, everybody's happy. Any other questions? Okay. So um, it's going to be um, included in the, uh, the, the material is going to be distributed. It, it's kind of hard to follow like this without doing it. It's more of a, I teach you how to, right? And the only way to learn this is really you do one. I invite you to do this super, super, super simple example. It's going to take you probably an hour all together to just go through it. You learn the step, and after that, you're going to say, well, that's easy, okay? So I, it's intended to be easy. <laughs> But then the Excel process, you can use, I used it on a much more complicated um, uh, process where I had hundreds of lines. So, but the fact that I had that scroll list freeze thing, I could flow through my Excel and it makes sense to me. I'm used to thinking in Excel. I'm used to displaying in Excel. So that's a quick tool. And then, like you said, and you can move into importing this and then you've, you've got a, a functioning uh, all those process. Okay, so uh, just a few thanks. Uh, Susan, Christine, and Kurt have helped me to uh, put this together originally. The, um, uh, the whole view process and understanding the things we can and cannot do. And at first, I thought it was going to be super complicated, but after a few meetings, uh, especially with Kurt's knowledge, we were able to come with this. And after I've done it, I was like, well, that. You know that button? That was easy. So I, I hit that button. It really did seem this way. But the first time around, it's not. But once you've done this, it's really, really easy. Okay? So thank you for your time. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Carlo. We're running a little bit early, and it's break time right now. So why don't we take uh, 15, 20 minutes to uh, catch up on work things, uh, network with your colleagues. Please uh, uh, feel free to introduce yourself around. We've made another number of introductions, but uh, part, part of the advantage of, of this uh, particular conference is, is networking between um, you know, people who are kind of dipping their toe in the water and trying to figure out, hey, is this right for me? And then people who have experienced uh, uh, the whole onboarding process. So um, feel free to uh, talk with your colleagues, enjoy the break, and we'll see you back here in about 15 to 20 minutes.